You may be seated. Uh, welcome to those who are here and those who are joining from uh, online. Actually, now we are sitting in the, uh, the rock room. It's much cooler than outside, actually. So for those who are struggling with heat, actually, this is the, the best place uh, for you. Uh, brothers and sisters, uh, last year alone, it is reportedly over 700,000 people committed suicide. And uh, double that number was those who attempted to commit suicide. And uh, suicide is the fourth leading cause of many young people uh, right now. And it is sad to see how many people ended their lives this way. And we do not uh, always know what are the reasons for people to commit suicide. Because many do not give the reasons why they do that. But uh, at least I can think two things why people choose their lives on that direction. Number one is they must have experienced sufferings and pain, shame, depressions to the point that they cannot bear it anymore and they end their lives. And secondly, which is closely related to that is some might have struggled with the meaning and purpose of life. They cannot make sense of the things that are happening inside of them in their lives and things that are uh, happening around the world. They struggle to see their lives from God's perspective. And we call this the wisdom of God, which is our topic today. And for those who have been following us in the last six, seven weeks, we have been talking about uh, God, knowing God series. And uh, today will be the last uh, one on that. Uh, you can go to GICF website to find out on, this, uh, on those topics. Let us uh, read from Ephesians chapter 3, verse 8 to 11. Although I am less than the least of all the lost people, this grace was given me to preach to Gentiles the boundless or the unsearchable riches of Christ and to make plain to everyone the administration of this mystery, which is for ages past kept hidden in God, who created all things. His intent was that now through the church, the manifold wisdom of God should be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly realms, according to his eternal purpose, which he accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord. Let us pray. God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may you give us the spirit of wisdom and revelation to know you better so we can worship you, we can love you, we can glorify you in our lives. Open the eyes of our hearts so we may know you the beauty of your wisdom, the richness of your wisdom, which is given to us in Christ Jesus our Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Today, I'm going to talk about uh, the manifold wisdom of God in our text. The manifold wisdom of God. And uh, to make it easy uh, uh, for you to follow, there will be like five C's. Uh, God's uh, wisdom is manifested through his creations, through his counsel, through Christ Jesus, through his church, and in our daily Christian life. But before we uh, unfold uh, these five face, uh, uh, five uh, angles of the wisdom of God, let's start with the meaning of the wisdom of God. What is the wisdom of God? Now, Wayne Grudem defines this as many other people, uh, that God always chooses the best goals and the best means to those goals. God's decision about what he will do are always wise decisions. That is, they are always bring about the best results from God's ultimate perspective. 
and they will bring about those results through the best possible means. Our God sees the big pictures and the small detailed pictures at the same time. He sees the end and the beginning at the same time. He sees also the process to the end. God sees from above, from underneath. God sees from all sides, from all angles. That is why in the last uh, couple of weeks, we, can, we see that God how, can God, how can God be just and love at the same time? He can be righteous and compassionate at the same time. He can punish and love at the same time. It is, it is beyond our own understanding to grasp it. But for God, he, he, he sees all these things at the same time from his own perspective. Now, uh, there are also, we could say, the two types or two natures of the wisdom of God. Number one is that uh, there are hidden or beyond our understanding. That's what Isaiah says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. And the heavens are high, as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. That speaks about his wisdom, his ways are much uh, higher than ours. And in Deuteronomy 29, 29, it says, The secret things belong to the Lord our God, but the things revealed belong to us and to our children forever, that we may follow all the words of his law. Here we can see that, yes, on the one hand, God's wisdom is beyond our understanding, but on the other hand, he's willing also to reveal, to make known his wisdom for us. We call that the revealed wisdom of God. And this revealed wisdom of God, some were hidden in the past. It was not revealed to the prophets in the Old Testament. But progressively, God makes it known to his people, his prophets, his apostles. And there are wisdom that are already available for us in our lives. But we need to seek him. Yes, uh, our song says, we need to continue to renew our mind to gain and to understand more of this wisdom that is already made available for us as believers. Now, let's go back to our manifold wisdom of God. How God reveals or manifest, manifested his wisdom throughout the history of the Bible. Number one, see number one, God reveals his wisdom through his creation. Psalm says, how many are your works? Lord, in wisdom you made them all. The Lord by wisdom founded the earth. He who made the earth by his power, who established the world by his wisdom. We can learn a few things from these verses. Number one, wisdom was the instrument by which God created the universe. Proverbs 8, verse 27 was, uh, uh, talks about the personified wisdom of God. He said, wisdom said, I was there when God created the whole thing, the heavens. And later on, we can find wisdom is in Christ. Secondly, we know that creation is not random. Creation is not just happen. It is a well-planned well designed why, by the wisest architect, God himself. Number three, we can learn from these verses is that uh, the creations, including our lives, has purpose and meaning. Right from the beginning. We are created in the image and likeness of God. And this meaning and purpose of life was and are given by our creator. The meaning and purpose of our lives are not given even by ourselves, not given by our government, not given by the kings, not given by our works, our status. It is given by the creator of our lives. And what is the ultimate purpose of all this? The Bible clearly says we all know it is for his glory. It is for his glory. We look at the stars in the sky and sometimes I wonder 
why there are so many stars? Do we need them all? Probably not. And there are still many that are not uh, discovered yet. But we don't know. Even many people have been struggling for decades to get to moon and Mars. But one thing is for sure. The stars are there. The beauty of this nature is to remind us of the glory of God. The power is mighty uh, here on his uh, creations. Number two, the wisdom of God is revealed through his counsels. Proverbs chapter 2 verse 6 says, The Lord gives wisdom, and from his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. What comes out of the mouth of God is his word, his commandments, his decrees, his statutes. And there are full of the wisdom of God. Even we have books in the Bible that we can learn a lot of wisdom like Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Psalms. And actually, the whole Bible contains the wisdom of God for us. And we'll learn more about this uh, later on. Number three, the wisdom of God is revealed to us in and through Christ Jesus. Our text uh, in Ephesus, Ephesians says that he made known the manifold of his wisdom according to the eternal purpose which he accomplished in Christ Jesus. So we could say that the whole purpose, whole counsel of God, the eternal purpose for us is accomplished is contained in Jesus Christ. There are some verses that you can read. Uh, 1 Corinthians 1.24. Uh, uh, we read earlier uh, to the worship team. But to those whom God has called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. 1 Corinthians 1.30 says, It is because of him that you are in Christ, Jesus, who has become for us wisdom from God. That is our righteousness, our holiness, and our redemptions. And I like Colossians 1, verse 9 to 10. You might find this is amazing verse about the wisdom. In order that you may know the mystery of God, namely Christ, in whom, in Christ, are hidden all the treasures and wisdom and knowledge in Christ Jesus, hidden all the wisdom, the knowledge of God. And we learn later that when we see Christ, to know him more, we'll have more of his wisdom inside of our lives. But the question is, how Christ become our wisdom? Number one, because he Christ is God himself. He is the second person of the triune God. And he's the Logos, the Word of God. He was there when the heaven and earth were created. And Colossians chapter 1, 16 says that everything in him, through him, by him, for him, were everything created, visible, unvisible, invisible, on earth, in heavens. That's why he the incarnated God contains the whole wisdom of God. Secondly, Christ becomes wisdom to us through redemption. And through redemption, the wisdom of God is revealed more freely. We read in our text that for ages past, that wisdom was kept hidden in God who creates all things. But now he revealed that to, to his his prophets, and his apostles. And the whole, whole uh, Ephesians chapter 1 talks about this, this richness of the wisdom of God. I encourage you to read and even memorize that, uh, Ephesians chapter 1, 3 to uh, 13. But I will read from a few verses from Ephesians chapter 1 uh, when uh, Paul talks about that Christ has blessed us with every spiritual blessings 
in the heavenly realms. In him, in Christ, we have redemption through his blood. The forgiveness of sin in accordance with the riches of God's grace, which he lavishes on us with all wisdom and understanding. The redemption of God comes through us through all the wisdom and understanding of God. Amazing. And in verse 11, in him we were also chosen. Now it is coming to us personally. Some people might think that I have made my own decisions to, uh, to choose God. But later on, you will find out that looking back, it is actually all well planned by God, right even before the creation of the world. In him we were chosen, having been predestined according to the plan of him who works everything out in conformity with the purpose of his will. When we read these verses, we, we stand in awe of God. The, the wise God who plans everything right from the beginning and he makes sure that his plans will come to pass. Look at the cross and we will look at the wisdom of God. That is what Paul says. The cross is a demonstration of the power and the wisdom of God. The theologian says, God the Father plans our salvations, God the Son executes it, and God the Holy Spirit applies the salvation, the redemption into our lives. Number four, the wisdom of God is still related to uh, Jesus Christ, is revealed to us through his church. In our text, his intent was that now through the church, the manifold wisdom of God should be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly realms, according to his eternal purpose, which he accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord. What is this manifold wisdom of God? Uh, in the context, uh, from chapter 2, verse 11 to chapter 3, verse uh, 13, actually this is, this is about the mystery of the gospel. And what is the mystery of the gospel? Chapter uh, verse 6 says this mystery is that through the gospel, the Gentiles are heirs together with Israel's members together of one body and sharers together in the promise in Christ Jesus. Paul was writing to the church in Ephesus, considerings of people from Jewish backgrounds and from Gentiles backgrounds. And he was telling them that the church is the place for people of many different backgrounds, races, ethnicities to come together. Now we don't really probably don't really understand the, the feeling of this, but if we, we bring ourselves to the first, second century uh, in, the, in Israel, in Roman Empire, we could feel that there was a, the, the, the dividing wall of hostilities between the Jews and the Gentiles. Paul talks about that in Ephesians chapter 2. The cross was to destroy this thick and tall wall that has been dividing these people for generations. And he was, he was revealing to them that actually this was the plan of God from right from the beginning. That one day through his church, people of many different backgrounds will come together. And Paul considered that as a privilege that he was entrusted this gospel. Now, you might think that well, that was the problem of the Jews and Gentiles. Do we still have problems with this, this time? Now, I'll allow uh, uh, Wayne Grudem once again to let us know about what he thinks of Ephesians chapter 3, verse 10. He says something like that. Today, this means that God's wisdom is sown even to the angels and demons, rulers and authorities. When people from different racial and cultural background are united 
in Christ in the church. If the Christian church is faithful to God's wise plan, it will be always in the forefront in breaking down racial and social barriers in societies around the world. And will this be a visible manifestation of God's amazingly wise plan to bring great unity out of great diversity and thereby to cause all creation to honor him. The fact that we are all now present here, we are not Jews by birth, it is a proof of God's eternal purpose from the beginning that one day his church will be considering of people from many uh, backgrounds. And uh, if we see around the ICF, there is a living proof of that. We are church uh, where people from many different backgrounds and come together, minister to each other, loving each other. And that's this, uh, so amazing and often very sad. Uh, churches are built along the line of races and ethnicities, but the church was planned right from the beginning, especially in the New Testament, that it is for all people from all backgrounds. Number five, the wisdom of God is revealed also in the individual Christian life. But before we, we learn further, we need also to know the difference between knowledge and wisdom. Because they are not the same even though they are closely related. But they do not always accompany each other. An uh, uneducated person may be superior to a scholar in wisdom. Knowledge is acquired by study, but wisdom is a result from intuitive insight into the experience of life. Knowledge is much more uh, theoretical. Wisdom is much more practical. Both are imperfect inside of us, but in God, both of them are perfect. That's why oftentimes in the Bible it says the knowledge and wisdom of God, or the wisdom and the knowledge of God. There are wisdom available by God in our Christian life. Book of Proverbs, for example, uh, is, is the book we can learn a lot about the wisdom of God. In the New Testament, Ephesians chapter 1, chapter 3, 4, 5, book of James are called also the chapters or book of wisdom in the New Testament. Uh, so I encourage you uh, to read, to learn, to study. But I would like to share how can we as individual Christians, having known that God is a wise God, uh, uh, full of wisdom, there are manifold wisdoms of God, how can we gain and live in the wisdom of God? There will be R's, you see. I like to make this sometimes point starting with the same letter. So for those who are busy, you can easily remember that. Uh, our number one is to receive Jesus, to have Jesus in your lives. As we learned uh, earlier, if Jesus is the wisdom of God and uh, all the treasures of wisdom are hidden inside of him, if we, have re if we receive Jesus, we have the wisdom of God living inside of us. So if you have not received Jesus in your lives, I will invite you to think, to pray, and to commit your lives to Jesus. And for those who already received Jesus, who so call them uh, themselves believers, you might ask this question. Now I have Jesus inside of my life. Do I have this wisdom ready to be used all the time? The answer is no. We need to continue to renew our minds, to learn more about Jesus, to understand more about Jesus, to grow, as Paul says in Ephesians. As a mature believer, we need to uh, grow into, uh, into the unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God. The more we learn about that, the more we will, will know the wisdom of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Look at the cross. Look at all the uh, different works of Jesus in uh, his uh, 
redemptive works. And we will find that uh, wisdom. Secondly, we are to request his wisdom. We are to ask his wisdom. Uh, James 1, 5 says, If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. It is interesting because uh, uh, the Bible encourages us to pray and ask for wisdom, and there is a promise that God will give to those who ask without finding fault. There is a clear promise that. But the question is, why do we need the wisdom of God in our lives? There are many reasons why. There are many needs. But I would like to mention two. Number one, so we can, we can know God better. We can know him better. That was the prayer of Paul to the church in Ephesus. He says, I keep asking. That means I continue to do that. Uh, God of our Lord Jesus Christ the glorious Father, to, so he may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelations to know him better. I pray that you have the spirit of wisdom and revelation to know him better. To know the God who is wise, we know the wisdom from him. Because actually, we cannot know God unless he himself reveals uh, to us so we need his term. So we know him, we glorify him, we worship him, we serve him in uh, our lives. Secondly, we need wisdom from God. We need to pray because we need to make lots of wise decisions in our lives. Every day, right from uh, when we wake up, we have to make decisions until the end of the day. How can we know that we make the right decision in our lives? The Bible asks us to ask God for wisdom. And the the one of the examples is the prayer of King Solomon in the Old Testament. He was just uh, uh, appointed, anointed as king of Israel, and he came to the Lord. And the Lord asked him, what do you want from me? You want wealth? You want uh, long life? You want power? Uh, but this is what Solomon asked. So give your servant a discerning heart to govern your people and to distinguish between right and wrong. For who is able to govern these great people of yours? And the next sentence says, And the Lord was pleased that Solomon has asked for this. The Lord was, was happy that instead of asking for wealth and power, Solomon asked for wisdom. And then God gave bonuses to him uh, as well. From here, we can learn that wisdom of God in our lives is the ability to discern, ability to decide which one is right or wrong. Later on, we'll see that actually the wisdom of God is, is a moral decision in our lives. Number three, how can we gain wisdom of God is revere him. So number one, receive Jesus. Number two, request. Number three, revere God. Prophets 1, verse 8, everyone knows that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, of wisdom, of understanding. Fear God means not to be frightened of him, but to respect, to honor him in our lives, to honor his commandments, to honor his teachings, to honor his, his ways that he has, uh, has revealed to us. Fear of God also means that we choose to rely on the ways of God more than our own ways. As famous Proverbs 3, verse 5 and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways submit to him, and he will make your path straight. Now in our lives, oftentimes, we are driven more to doubt the ways of God uh, because sometimes the ways of God are not what we want to live out our lives. And then we choose to 
rely on our own understanding. But the way of the wisdom of God is actually the way of trusting God. The way of the wisdom of God is the way of relying upon Him, even though many times we don't really understand what is happening in our lives. Oftentimes we cannot make sense of that, but God wants us to continue to try to rely on Him. Because if we make decisions based on our understanding, sometimes there will be a fatal consequences of that. For example, just go back to Genesis chapter 3. Adam and Eve tried to make decisions based on their own understanding, listening to the temptations of the devil. Instead of trusting what God has said, they want to follow their, their own desires, what they see, what they feel, what they think was right. And what happens? They fell into sin. And now we still bear the consequences of that. Sometimes making decision based on our own decisions has very serious consequences. In the history of the Bible, we can think like Saul. He was given a, a privilege as the first king of Israel. But at one time, when the Samuel the prophet told him just to wait for a while before uh, they could offer uh, offerings to the Lord. But based on his own understanding, Saul made his own decisions. And it cost him his throne. Uh, so, uh, refer him, trust in his ways, seek him, and make decisions based on God's wisdom. Number four is we are to reflect on the word of God, on his counsels. As I said before, God reveals his wisdom through his counsel, through his commands. So when we reflect on that, we think about that, we can have the wisdom of God in our lives. Uh, I like Psalm 19 and 119. It says, the law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul, the stages of the Lord is trustworthy, making wise the simple. Amazing. What are the status? The status are the, the written word of God, his, his commandments, his words, and uh, that makes wise the simple. Or I like to read these uh, verses to my children when I ask them to read the Bible every day instead of forcing them to do that and later on they will hate it. I just uh, told them, actually, you, when you read the Bible, think of the Bible, there are lots of benefits of wisdom in your lives. In Psalm 119, it says, uh, uh, Oh, how I love your law. I meditate on it all day long. Your commands are always with me and make me wiser than my enemies. I have more insight than all my teachers. And sometimes I jokingly told the children, you see, if you learn the Bible, you are wiser, <laughs> even having more insight than all your teachers. Uh, and for I meditate on your thoughts. I have more understanding than the elders, for I obey your precepts. In the words of God contains the wisdom of God. And as we reflect on it, we think, we pray, and we, uh, we obey them. We will uh, have more and more wisdom and insight in our lives. And the last one is recognize the life of wisdom. What is the life of wisdom in practical sense? Now, there are at least two I would like to mention, and I will encourage you to read, and you will discover more, because the, the wisdom of God is boundless, unsearchable uh, in our lives. Number one, actually, the living in the wisdom of God means living righteously, to have right, good moral choices, to live a morally good life, not to earn God's favor, but uh, those who have this wisdom will always choose the right path in their lives. James 3.13 says, Who is wise and understanding among you? Let them sow it by their good life, 
by deeds done in humility that comes from wisdom. James 3.17 says, But the wisdom that comes from heaven, that wisdom from God, is first of all pure, then peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere. There are lots of things to learn even from this one verse. But the main point is that the, having the wisdom of God will lead us to live a righteous life, life that is pure, life that is, uh, that is trustworthy, uh, full of integrity, and so forth uh, in our daily lives, in your businesses, the decisions that you have made. Sometimes it's very difficult, but uh, if I believe if you ask the wisdom, the Lord will lead you. Uh, to make right decisions. And secondly, uh, uh, living in the wisdom of God is having, the, having God's perspective in facing sufferings, pains, hardships, problems in our lives. Because if we, we face challenges in our lives and we try to see from only one angle our own perspective, probably we'll, we'll give up. I uh, cannot understand, but if we try to see from God's wisdom, probably, or it's, the Bible says we can see it from much different perspective. Romans chapter 8, 28, 29 says, And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose, his wisdom, his wise plan, for those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many uh, brothers. Paul was encouraging the church in uh, Rome who were facing challenges in life, that in all things, all things means, can be bad things, good things, sufferings, joy, laughter, tears, all things. God is working for the good. Those. He has planned everything in detail right from the beginning. We just need to see from his perspective. And one of the purposes is that we are to be conformed more and more to be like him in our lives. That is the grand purpose of God. He allows all these things to happen in our lives. We need to be persevere to face those challenges in life. One pastor says that if you want to read a sad book, how to, how to be able to overcome that? And he will say, that you go to the last pages and see if the ending is good. If you see the ending is good, then you will read the rest of the book with joy, with hope. <laughs> so, also in our lives, we, we are facing now lots of challenges, lots of things we don't understand in our lives. And when we face that, go to the last pages of the Bible, Revelations 21, 22. The Lord will come back and he will make everything new. At the end, God triumphs, God overcomes all. And then now in between, you can live your life uh, from his perspective, even though we face lots of challenges in our lives. May this encourage you uh, to live out your daily lives in the wisdom and knowledge of God. Let us pray. Father God, thank you so much. Even though your wisdom is beyond our understanding, but you have revealed some of them to us through the spirit that is living in us. Lord, we, we, we can know your wisdom. And through having Jesus Christ, the wisdom of God, in him, hidden the treasures, all the treasures of the wisdom and knowledge of God. And we pray, Father, that Holy Spirit will guide us to love Jesus, to learn more about him. And, uh, Lord, to allow his wisdom to guide and lead our lives. In the name of Jesus, we pray and give thanks. Amen.